watch Sky In the late 2000s, an unknown user posted a thread to an unknown form, detailing their experiences with a mysterious and terrifying mod for the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. The mod in question was named JVK1166Z.esp. The mod has since thought to be lost to time, but the story has been reposted all across the dark corners of the internet. Over the years I've done my fair share of internet sleuthing in an attempt to track down this mysterious mod. I wasn't the only one however, as there's also a couple of reddit pages dedicated to the pursuit of discovering this mod. I kept tabs on their findings over the years but ultimately not much was found, and it seems the few members the page had have since moved on. However the general consensus was that this mod was a hoax and just another creepy pasta. I believe this to be the case myself. Until recently. A few weeks ago I came across a video by a Russian creator who claimed to have a copy of JVK along with a clip showing footage and gameplay as proof. He also provided a download link. So I downloaded it and to my surprise it worked. Now if you're unfamiliar with the story of JVK I won't be relaying the entire story here but I'll give you the footnotes as we go. It is said the mod couldn't be installed like your typical mods and would instead need to be booted through a program called DOSBox. Now gamers from the 80s and 90s will most likely be familiar with this program, it brought many games to the monitors of gamers in the early days. Now the original poster claimed that the mod made NPCs act bizarrely, they had strange and unsettling dialogue. Not only that, but something dark lurked beyond the veil, stalking the player indefinitely. The mod was relatively simple to install, and once I was in game nothing really seemed amiss, until I left the census office in Sedanine to begin the game proper. The text box that appears when a main quest character dies appeared at the bottom of the screen. At least, once I translated it, I realised that's what it was. It quickly dawned on me that this mod was actually in Russian, and since I only have an English language copy of the game, the text wouldn't display correctly for me so I had to improvise and translate it on the go. So there's many essential NPCs in the game that are imperative to the main quest. So who was it that had died? I had to go and see for myself, so I went straight to the Siltstrider to travel to Balmora. When I was greeted with this new piece of dialogue, the text I believe translates to Watch the Skies, Traveller, with goodbye as my only available option. For those of you who have read the original Creepypasta, knows what this means. I was floored, could it be? Was I actually playing a real version of JVK? So it seemed I couldn't fast travel, so I'd have to go on foot. Realising this, I backtracked to collect the scrolls of Vicarian Flight, and then to Arrow's Trade House to grab some gear for the road. Almost immediately as I set foot inside Arrow's Trade House, an apparition of some sort appeared behind me and began to attack me. This took me by surprise, as many of you Morrowind players will know, NPCs cannot travel through doors that load to new locations. So this did rattle me a little bit, so I went AFK for a quick bathroom break. A coincidence, I assure you. When I returned, I could hear something coming through my headset. I put my headset back on, but I couldn't really make it out, so I turned the volume up to max. This is what I could hear. whispering. Whispering that I hadn't heard in the game before. Now I was even more freaked out than I was pre-bathroom break, so I quickly bought my gear and hit the road towards Balmora. Now let me tell you, I have never been this on edge while playing this game. I was constantly looking behind me expecting to see something, but there was never anything there. Arriving in Balmora I headed straight to Caius Cassade's house, and the game was right. He was dead. So I rushed to the Fighters Guild and Hasfat was dead too. Next door in the Mages Guild, Sean was also dead. It wasn't just these NPCs though. I quickly realised that every single main character in the game was dead, automatically locking the game's progression and dooming the player to this forsaken world. Remembering the original post about the mod, I waited for night to fall to see if anything else had changed. 
I stood in the plaza of Balmora, waiting for this apparition to show up and attack me, but he didn't. Night fell and not much had changed, most NPCs didn't have anything new to say, so I headed to the ghost gate to see if I could find a new NPC called Tyrus, who according to the original post, apparently was waiting for the player. As I arrived I noticed a new NPC, but as you can see, the mesh on his outfit wasn't loading correctly. I was surprised the mod even worked at all, so I could handle a few bugs here and there. I checked the files in the mod to see if I could figure out what the issue was, but it seemed that the mesh that was required for his clothing was just not there, so there wasn't any way I could fix it. However, I can show you what he's supposed to look like. When speaking to him he says, look at the sky, honest. You can ask him about tasks, in which he'll say, do you feel it? Something has changed. The world is dying. Salvation lies in solving the mysteries of the ancients three times. Find the citadel. Your diary updates, saying discover the secrets of the ancients. So I had no idea what this meant, so I was just referring back to the original creepypasta to try and figure out what it was I should be doing. Now as the story goes, there's a new dungeon called the Citadel located off the western shore of the map on its own little island. I headed to the western coastline and perched myself on top of a rock to see what I could see in the horizon, when suddenly this apparition appeared again and striked me in the back. Before I could even defend myself, I was dead. And then he disappeared as a disturbing moaning sound was playing around my character's body. I loaded a save and returned to the shore. Coincidentally, using the scrolls of Arcarian Flight on the western shore takes you almost directly to this new island. So I approached the island and discovered an entrance to the cave, an entrance to the citadel. Quickly exploring the island, there wasn't really anything of note, so I went inside. Now if you've read the story, you'll probably remember what's supposed to be in here. According to the minimap, I was on the first level, a pretty standard looking cave, and it was well lit. Just to the right of the entrance was a skeleton, with an exclusive potion of rising force sitting between his legs. I assumed I'd need it, so I grabbed it and moved on. The cave opens into a giant cavern filled with aylets. So I quickly ran down the first tunnel. I passed multiple kagutis and shulks, and a couple of nix hounds. I kept following the tunnel, and it just kept going deeper, opening up into another cavern. A second open space with a pillar in the middle, and a mummified body sat at its base. Heading down even further to reach another door, this led me to the second level. You're immediately accosted by swarms of undead inside this tomb. I didn't know how realistic it would be to fight off every enemy here, so I ran as fast as I could until I found the exit. Reaching a long corridor, I found a descending spiral ramp that seemed to go on forever. Eventually, it led me to another cave opening, connected to a Daedric Ruin. The door ahead leads to the third level. The Daedric Ruin is completely packed with Daedra... Believe... <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? Making it really difficult to progress through as they block the narrow corridor. Heading through, you'll be dodging shots from elemental atronauts, but as you make it to the end of the corridor, it leads to an intersection with three staircases. The two on the sides just loop back around to the corridor, and the one in the middle is a long, zigzaggy staircase that takes you down until you're confronted by a Dwemer sphere guarding the next door to the fourth floor. It's pretty much more of the same in here, narrow corridors, packed with Dwemer machines. It's a tight squeeze, but if you can make it past them, you can go down to another level, and you'll reach a seemingly endless corridor with metal grating on the floor. Eventually you'll reach the end of this corridor to another Dwemer door called The Last Loop. So I went inside, and this area is basically an exact copy of the fourth level, however a thick fog or steam is completely obscuring your vision. You can only see a few feet in front of you, all the while you can hear whistling of steam and the clanking of machines around you. Once I realised this area was pretty much a complete copy of the previous floor, I headed straight down to the exit. Reaching the final corridor, I can make out the silhouette of the door through the steam. Two Dwemer Centurions were blocking my path, so I had to quickly dodge them to get through. This final door leads to the most infamous area of the JVK story, the Portrait Room. When I entered, the game confronted me with several error messages of missing meshes, after clicking through all the error messages, I finally stepped out into the portrait room, and the reason that I was getting these errors became obvious. For those of you who are familiar with the JVK story will know what we're supposed to be seeing in this room. 
There should be 2D floating images taken directly from the player's My Picture folder on your computer. Now I'm not sure if this is because I don't actually have any pictures in my My Pictures folder that I was getting these errors, or if this is just more missing files in the mod. Fortunately though, I can show you what you're supposed to be seeing in here. The portrait room looks like a copy of one of the Vivek Cantons, although the doors on the buildings at the side don't actually lead anywhere. At the end of the portrait room is a large door, labelled the Room of Desires, however it's locked. I attempted to use the console to unlock the door, but even that didn't work. Now referring back to the original JVK story, the mystery surrounding this door is one of the most discussed aspects of the story. The author of the story speculates what's behind it, or even how to unlock it. Essentially, a certain amount of time has to pass in game before the player can attempt to open the door. So I was able to figure out that if I changed my game day to the 444th day using the console, I was able to unlock the door and see what was behind it. So it took me to a copy of the Corpusarium, but just the inner cave. Yagram Bagan was sat in the middle of the cave just staring at me. So I approached him to speak to him, and after some translating, this is what he had to say. You've come this far, I can tell you something about you, honest. I feel like Mimo Kuroki will again write in the comments under this April Fool's video that this is a clickbait and you were just an ordinary <laughs> shit eater who decided to swipe on an old long forgotten topic. I also see how despairingly little this video will collect views. I see how your efforts and attempts to fake JVK 1166Z ESP will not pay off in the like comment equivalent and hardly anyone who has watched up to this point will want to subscribe to the TV channel for the fact that you produce fakes. Understand? So, a little bit of broken English because it is translated from Russian. But I think by now you've probably figured this out. This mod is actually like a practical joke made by a YouTuber called Honest Games. So I guess everyone was right all along. JVK is just a creepypasta, it's just a story, and it isn't actually real. However, this was a little fun excursion. It, it was an interesting idea. It was fun to play through. And I think this is probably the closest we're ever gonna get to playing the real JVK. So I found this mod pretty interesting. The concept was pretty interesting. It was nice to see someone you know, actually try to make the mod from the story. Pretty cool idea. If you guys want to try it out yourself, I will leave a link down below to Honest's video where you can get the mod yourself. What do you guys think? Do you, do you think JVK might have been real at some point? Do you think it's just another creepypasta story? Would you like to try this mod for yourself? Let me know. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more Elder Scrolls content. What? What?